Hello and welcome back. Um, so this is Shang Yang, um, and he leads up Project Longhorn Ranchers open source microservices based distributed block storage solution. Yes, I'm reading that. Um, okay. because it's a mouthful. But what's really cool is that um, storage is definitely one of the topics that we haven't yet covered today. So I'm really excited to have you on. Thanks so much for being here. Um, and, and covering the really necessary topic of storage and how do you do it in a cloud native world. Um, so with that, the floor is yours. All right, thank you so much. So let's get started. Hi, everyone. So uh, my name is Shen Yang. I'm a software actor from Rancher Labs. And today I was talking about our project Longhorn, which is kind of probably new to even Rancher's users, but we have been working on this project for the past four years. So first, let's just revisit what is the cloud native. So this is definition of cloud native in the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CNCF. Uh, there's a bunch of words here, but I think the most important one is following four. So the cloud native application first should able to be portable, which means the application you run, the application you wrote should be really cloud agnostic and it should be able to run public cloud, private cloud, or hybrid cloud. It should not really depend on what uh, bonding to the one cloud provider, like either it's AWS or um, Google Cloud, or any private cloud providers. So that's portability. The second part is resiliency. As you know that cloud native applications are normally form of the microservices and on the premises that if one microservice is dead, this should be very quickly has a replacement and the repel by itself. And that's the resiliency we're talking about. And the third point is elastic. So if you have the sudden traffic from the user and the high demand coming all in one second, you should able to do the, you should able to scale your application either horizontally or vertically to meet that demand easily. And finally, we're talking about continuity. Because the cloud native applications form also microservices, so it should be easy for the developer to do continu continuous integration, continuous development, CICD, as we said, and uh, publish the newest version and the greatest version to the user as quick as possible, but not suffering from the service down or any arrows in the new version because you can do the rollback and the recovery very quickly as well. So I think that's the four core properties for the cloud native applications. But the cloud native applications are not stateless. They always have to be stored state in somewhere, either it's storage or you can put that in some, push, some, push the status in some like a third party API like um, Amazon S3 or some other object store, but you have to form that API. So how is the storage handling the cloud native applications? If you are, you are not using pushing the stateless state of the application to a third party, you probably have to do that um, to provide the persistent storage to your to your applications. But there are challenges for the existing storage solutions. As, as the first one is not, is the storage system is not really portable. For example, if you go on the AWS EC2, you're probably going to use EBS. And if you go on the Google Cloud, you're going to use persistent disk. That's two different things. And you are not going to write applications and run on both. And the second part is uh, if you go with the private, provided cloud, you're probably most likely going to buy some dedicated boxes like EMC or NetApp and use that for your cloud infrastructure. And that is also not easily portable to some other solutions or put it to the public cloud. The second point I want to make is the resiliency is normally good within the storage system because that's what the storage system do. 
The storage is the probably the most critical part of your application, and nobody wants to lose data. Shang, I'm really sorry to interrupt you real quick. Um, we're actually yeah. not seeing your slides, so if you don't mind resharing those. Oh, sorry. All right. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. So uh, I was talking about the resiliency within the system. So storage system normally do very good on that, but it's not really easy to kill fail safe copy outside the system. For example, if you are using Ceph, you know that Ceph is pretty good. Uh, do a good job, keep your job, uh, keep your data inside the Ceph system within the one cluster, but the Ceph doesn't really have a way for you to back up the system, back up your data into someone else or export the data. So there's a bunch of backup products just written for Ceph to achieve these purposes. And the third point is Elastic is normally good with public cloud, but not so much with private uh, hybrid cloud. So the uh, so the public cloud, for example, if we are using AWS, you can always ask him for the EBS volumes if you, uh, as long as you pay for it. But the private hybrid cloud, if you are bringing new machines or starting new VMs, you normally need to do a bunch of configurations to make storage works, no matter what the underlying storage system is. And finally, it's pretty hard to achieve continuity since upgrades really need some downtime because uh, normally the upgrade in the storage system going to interrupt your flow, uh, interrupt your uh, service facing the users. So you're going to see some maintenance downtime. So this is what we have right now for the existing storage solutions. So we're thinking that is it possible that we can create a storage solution just in a cloud native way, write a cloud native storage solution that's fit, that's powered by the cloud native infrastructure like Kubernetes, and but also feed the functionality into the cloud native applications. That's how we come up with Longhorn. So let me talk a little bit about what's the details about Longhorn. So first, Longhorn is open source cloud native storage solution. It's block storage. And uh, we are, because it's cloud native, we do have a lot of microservice to make sure that we do, uh, we have resiliency and the uh, easy to deploy and this kind of functionalities. It's very easy to deploy in Longhorn in any Kubernetes clusters. If you are using Rancher, it, you can just do one click deployment within the Rancher catalog apps. apps. If you are using uh, just any other Kubernetes cluster, you can check the Longhorn homepage, which is at uh, github slash github.com slash Rancher slash Longhorn. And there's just one line of code, which is basically apply a Kubernetes YAML file to your cluster, which used it to create the Longhorn cluster. And it's always resilient. It's not only within the system, but also we have a building mechanism back up the, your volume to the S3 ONFS endpoint. So in that way, you should you should able to get the second system which act as a fail safe if the Longhorn system or that cluster down due to any reason. So nobody should able to able to predict what is happening in the future. So it's better to be safe than sorry. And the fourth point is that we, the long run itself, scales wise Kubernetes. What by that I mean, if you add a Kubernetes into, uh, if you add a node into Kubernetes cluster, long run can automatically recognize that and use, starting use that cluster if you doing a certain per setup. And finally, long run has ability to upgrade without warning downtime. Not 100% of the time, probably 95% of the time, but that is depend that is because the, the special structure we're using to implement the local controllers. Okay, before I dive into the details of uh, uh, how the local was implemented, is there any questions? 
Okay. So for the Longhorn data plane, assuming that you have two nodes and each one have a bunch of hard drive and the CPU and the memory. And you have container, which asking for a volume. And the volume, and the for Longhorn dude, is they were starting a controller and the two replicas, assuming that you want two replicas instead of three or four or one. Normally people don't want one replica because that's not really resilient at all. So the world, the controller will um, connect to the replicas and the replica will be allocated into different nodes. And then controller will present a block device on the same host of the container is running and the, the container will use that block device. Um, in fact, the Kubernetes will format that block device into a file system and mount it for the volume to use as a persistent storage. So it's very simple. But you see that here, that if the, in the long haul model, in order to provide one volume, we are going to use three, at least three small microservices, two replicas and one controller. And as you may be able to guess that this microservice, that's controller and the replica are all packaged in the containers. So it's easier for us to deploy these containers into different hosts and form the necessary volume for the user. If you have a second container asking for volume, we'll do the same. And the third one's still the same. So on the data plane, the thing is very simple and clear. But what if we, but now you have the problem that how do we manage all these controller as replicas as a whole? How do we decide that? Well, should I start the controller and the replicas? So that's how the local manager and the Kubernetes come into play. So imagine you have uh, multiple, multiple volumes, which uh, and the run have the two replicas for each volume. And uh, notice that I changed the name uh, and controller to engine here. I will explain later. And is the local manager going to orchestrate all this controller, and all this volume, and decide what to do? The local manager itself is owning a connection of the controllers, which in the Kubernetes sense, and connect to the Kubernetes API server. All the state local manager kept about this, this volume as is to keep into the Kubernetes API server and indirectly into the SAD. So if a Kubernetes want to have create a new volume or do something about that volume, they were talked with Longhorn through the Longhorn CSI plugin using the CSI interface. And the CSI is a container storage interface, which is the, stand, is the, the standardized the spec for the container infrastructure, container orchestrations, like uh, Kubernetes, Docker, Mesos, they're going all going to follow this standard. So the Longhorn CSI plugin, we're talking the Longhorn managers through the Longhorn API and to perform the necessary works. We also have a Longhorn volume talk to the Longhorn manager using the Longhorn API to perform some, uh, some operations that Kubernetes cannot do, like uh, take snapshot backup and uh, set up the node doing some configuration and the scheduling the backup and the snapshot for a certain period of time. Okay. So here, is that I give a quick example of why Kubernetes, we say that Longhorn is the cloud native or Kubernetes native controller. And uh, here I show that what is a Kubernetes controller pattern. If you know that Kubernetes controller pattern is uh, sometimes people call it operator pattern, it's the continuous reconciliation between the spec and the status. The spec is what the user defined of how much what's the status you want to get, and the status was the observation of the current status in the system. Now here on the right, I have a volume defined as a three replicas, and the, the current status, we have three healthy replicas, so nothing we need to do. And the engine itself, they have a replica list, list they have three replicas there, and the status, all three replicas are, are in the green, which means they're healthy, so nothing we need to do. So here we'll demonstrate that how Longhorn decide to rebuild one volume use this information. First, assuming that no three is down. 
And the engine will immediately detect the node three and the replica three is down the deep connection will become red. And the Longhorn manages to see that the engine reports the replicate the replica as the red and the Longhorn will remove the replica three from the replica list. So the connection between the engine and the replica list was disconnected. But now we only have a two healthy replicas, but we want three. So local manager will start, will asking engine to start rebuilding a new replica and the node four. And node four will be added into the engine spec. And the engine will see that and starting rebuilding the replica four, which is we show it as yellow here. For now, the current healthy replica is still two. After the rebuild was done, the engine will finish, will report that the replica four now become healthy. And the local manager will see that an update to the healthy replica to three, which is match what we expectation. And now the resiliency of the engine of the local volume has been restored. All right, next I'm going to do a demo to show you how local works. Uh, all right, next. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now I have two questions coming. One is coming from Michael. How does Longhorn compile to the PubWorks? So uh, by first, Longhorn is open source product and uh, PubWorks currently is closed source. And uh, I haven't been have much experience with PubWorks, but uh, I think on the stable, but I think they have been prototyped earlier than Longhorn. So we're playing catch up game. But uh, in fact, uh, because the Longhorn is open source and we do work on a lot of, com uh, we use it to try. And uh, I have tried the PolarWorks once. It's not really easy to set up and locally, but I'm going to show that how easy is it for Longhorn to set up. So I think that will give us some differentiate. And uh, how Longhorn is different from Rook. So in fact, the Rook is uh, from Ra uh, Raphael Longer. So the Rook, in fact, is not really a complete solution as the storage system. The, the Rook is basically orchestration Ceph and uh, trying to migrate Ceph in the cloud native environment. There are many things Rook can do, but uh, the Rook doesn't own the stack from the bottom. The Ceph build, a, I, I have to admit Ceph build a very good foundation, but the Rook for itself, is, Rook's role is more like local manager which is going to decide well to schedule the uh, the Rook instance and uh, sorry, we schedule the self instance and all this kind of management operational stuff. Okay, so let's start the demo. So can you see my screen? Okay, was getting off mute. Yes, we can. Oh, okay. All right. So now I going. I have a currently running a rancher instance. I'm going to just live. I'm just going to deploy Longhorn right now. So I switch to the system name uh, system project. Click catalog app and I'm going to launch Longhorn. I'm going to show that how long I'm going to upgrade without interrupting the workload. So I'm going to choose a slightly older long -haul version now. All right, so in fact, uh, it's very fast for Rancher to detect that it's still upgrade available. And uh, for now, we just wait for long -haul to deploy it. Okay, I think the driver is not ready yet, but they will be ready very soon. Okay, should be fine now. Okay, now you, what you see is uh, the Longhorn UI. 
So for the dashboard, we can see that what's how many volume we have right now and what's the uh, storage we can use on the node. By default, Longhorn is using uh, is co located with your root disk and using some directory on the on the root. You utilize it as part of storage, but you can reserve part of storage for the root disk for in order for Kubernetes and the, the, the operation system to use. So that is what we have here. And we have three nodes there, both of all of them green, and also we have even a log in between. On the node page, you can see that. So the, currently we're using the Valib Rancher Longhorn as the place we're going to store the data. But you can do add it in the disk. If you want to add any disk, just format the disk, mount it on the root, mount it on some place in the node and put the path here. Longhorn can detect that how many storage we can use in that disk. Same for the all other nodes. We currently doesn't really have a warning right now, so the warning page is empty. So this is uh, now I'm going to show you how to set a backup target. As I mentioned, backup is a very critical feature of Longhorn, so we do recommend that every user should set up backup target. And it's, uh, we also have attached uh, in our document, we also shipped one uh, testing backup store here with uh, using the menu and uh, you can just set up it using this one line command. I'm going to do that in the Kubernetes. All right, I think most of them, are, I think I already set up them. So it's, uh, it's the error on the existing. So the back to target after you are around this and set up the menu backup store, I'm going to set up back at target and uh, the, oops. Here and click save. Now we can click the backup. You see that uh, we don't have any backup right now and we don't have warning. So that's, but we don't have error message, so that's fine. So for the next step, I'm going to show you how you're going to use Longhorn. For now, I'm going to use the example from WordPress. That's common things. And we want to marry DB and WordPress to use persistent volume. And uh, in fact, the default storage class right now is Longhorn, so you can you, you don't need to choose this, but just in case. So I'm going to launch a WordPress instance with Longhorn. So in fact, I can look take a look at the dashboard here and waiting for the command to the Kubernetes calling to Longhorn to start this volumes. Now you can see that the two warnings flash up and uh, they are in the progress to being attached. Look at the warning page, they're doing attaching. It should be there very soon. And the endpoint is show means that attached as take a few seconds for them to detect that what's the status of this uh, volume. Once you have volume in place, the WordPress will continue to deploy and now I want to show that I want to show you that what is the the UI of the detail warning page so as you can see now so we have default by default three replicas running on three different nodes demo one two and three and uh, because we have set up the backup store we can just create a backup it will take a while and uh, for the backup, we're going to take snapshot first and uh, put that snapshot in the backup, in the backup store. The difference between the snapshot and backup in the Longhorn is snapshot is existing within the Longhorn system, but the backup is Longhorn copy that what's the content of that volume of snapshot into someone, into a third party like a S3 object store on FS server. And here you can also set in the recruiting snapshot backup if you want to have your volume backup per every day or every hour, you can set up here. Let's see if WordPress is up. All right, the WordPress is up. Everything looks good. 
So let's log in. Write something about it. Publish. And just make sure that it's stored. OK, so now I'm going to demo what if one node is down. By similar to that, I'm going to just delete the replicas on, a certain, on any random node. I'm choosing demo two, but you can do that on, for the demo purposes this only. You can do that on any node. So the volume, because the replicas are down, so the volume is not in a healthy state, they are degrading. So, and the, the volume is starting rebuilding, as you can see here, but in the, in the meantime, the WordPress still functions well. Nothing really changed, right? It takes some time to rebuild. Okay. All right, now the rebuild complete and uh, the one become healthy again. And the WordPress is as good as always. So now I'm going to show that how easily it is for user to upgrade a Longhorn. Because we are built upon the Kubernetes and cloud, in the cloud native way, it's really easy to upgrade. In, in order to upgrade, you can, in fact, from Longhorn UI, if you notice, here is a green arrow shows that Longhorn 0.3.3 is available, and currently we're running 0.3.2. After you receive that notice, you can head into the catalog apps in the Rancher and click Upgrade. And this will upgrade the Longhorn Manager, but the Longhorn Engine, because it's still running, will still run on the old version but we'll deal with that very soon. Well, I don't believe this be so quick. Really? Yeah, that's right. So yeah, as you can see now, the new version has been deployed, the old version has been deleted. And I think it's probably ready now. No, not yet. Let me see if you are, okay. So now UI is showing 0.3.3, which means our upgrade of local manager works. But because the, the volume currently is running, we don't automatically upgrade the volume image. So you can see that in the setting, the engine image, they have the old version, which is 0.3.0, which is used by 0.3.2, we need as well. And the new version 0.3.3. So now we are going to upgrade these two volumes while the volume is still being used. And we just click Upgrade Engine here. We want to use, to use the newer version, and we click OK. Uh, we probably want to upgrade WordPress as well. So I just click, please upgrade now. Update now. And this part is upgrade. Oh, I think it's already complete. Let's click. Okay, let's see. What's the version? Doesn't show here. Check again. Hmm. Seems WordPress doesn't really want to upgrade. But the long horn itself, you upgrade correctly. Let's upgrade this one as well. It's the, the second engine we want to upgrade. Let's see. Updates. Check again. Well, what press is okay. Let's upgrade plugins. Oh, now here. 
Okay, I think we'll press finally complete and upgrade. All right, 5.3.5.0.3. Uh, now the WordPress is upgraded and the Longhorn itself is upgraded. We have all using the latest version. Okay. So for the next, I want to show you that how Longhorn is scaled with uh, Kubernetes. You see that cluster demo, we have only three nodes. I just click on and create full node. And now the long, uh, the rancher we're asking RKE to then to provisioning a new node. And the long doesn't have anything yet, but now we can also try that to do this recurring backup because our data is important. We're doing the backup every minute. Return five. Now doing backup a minute, return three. Okay, let me see if the how the backup goes. Oh yeah, okay. So that's how you config the backup. Let's say the provisioning here is still provisioning the new long home warning. So I can ask. I can answer a few questions now, I think. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, this was great. I love the fact that we did get to cover um, storage as part of the cloud native space, and we'll look for um, more things coming out of Longhorn and the Longhorn project, and I think it's super exciting. So thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Soya. Thanks.